What's up guys, it's Punchy, and now it's time for Deep Oaken's Bloodbending to take the stage. Recently, there's been a massive enchant rework for something specific that I haven't seen anyone really bring up, so it's gotta be showcased within its full glory. So, let me ask you a question. What exactly makes a Deep Oaken curse different from any other enchant? Well, I think it's safe to say that most current Deep Oaken curses have a downside or many downsides that justify their strength. For instance, the Curse of Yun Shul has a pretty small chance of dealing extra damage at the cost of hurting the user. The Curse of Unbidden doesn't have an offensive crit replaced fully by ether draining M1s and a stunning counter. And the Curse of the No Life King receives passive healing but suffers from basically anything else. So that leaves us with just one more curse. The Curse of the Bloodthirsty is what I consider one of the best enchants in all of Deep Oaken due to a tiny change that flipped it in entirely. Keeping it simple, this enchant is very basic, yet extremely useful. Only applying on weapon M1s, we deal 10% extra damage on a successful hit, which is unpreventable bonus damage, like just straight up more damage. Also, I just want to specify that all critical attacks seem to be exempt from this bonus, and it's purely for weapon M1s. On top of this, all bloodthirsty weapon M1s deal increased blood damage. This is cool, but it realistically isn't going to kill any players unless they're distracted or running a build with negative drain modifiers. So, as of right now, blood drain isn't always gonna win fights, but it can make your enemy more defensive. Besides this, blood letter has become base for everybody, which increases blood damage on knock players, getting a large increase with the bloodthirsty enchant. A normal basic sword M1 seems to drain all blood from a knock target in about 33 to 35 hits, while the curse of bloodthirsty drains all blood in about 13, which is actually insane. All Although, I don't think blood is the best way to confirm your grip, you gain about a 40% bonus with this curse on knocked players, so it's just easier to confirm with better weapons. Again, I was using the base sword, and that's still pretty good. And this finally brings us to the bloodthirsty downside, which practically does not exist. Previously, if you missed an M1, you'd lose 1% of your current HP every single time, but this was removed and replaced with something not very good. Instead, if you miss an M1 completely, you're losing 1% of your blood meter, which is honestly useless, nothing compared to losing health. Sure, it can slow down your pressure if you keep on swinging and missing, but that's not even close to before, which actually just injured you. Again, Bloodthirsty only counts as a miss if you completely overshoot your target. Blocks, parries, and even perfect dodges will register, and you won't lose blood, which is very powerful. So, coming full circle, this is an enchant with 10% bonus damage, completely unpreventable, solid blood drain, and easier grips, all with a downside that practically does not exist. In Deep Woken, once you start stacking on those multipliers, especially with Bloodthirsty, this is, you know, it's dangerous. It's definitely way too good to forget about and even consider as a negative curse. So, if you haven't tried it out yet, the Curse of the Bloodthirsty is up next, and I recommend giving it a shot. So anyway, that's all for right now, and if you want to help me out, please like and subscribe. I'm shooting for 90k subs and let's get there. Thanks again, it's punching time.